do you see exams as? Challenges or something that should be made optional or something that should be completely scrapped? That's what we're debating on Crossfire today. On my right, I'm joined by Aman, uh, an entrepreneur, and on my left, I'm joined by Divya, also an entrepreneur. Divya, you feel that board examinations should remain optional. Uh, Tell us about your point. Why do you feel that? <clears throat> the fact that you mentioned uh, that 55% of the students chose not to take the yeah, board exam. Yeah, which is what happened last year in 2015. Yeah, yeah please. So I, I really do think that either they should be scrapped off completely and with, with time, or they should be made optional for a few years for the government to really see what's going on and then you know take a final action on it. Why they should be made optional or be scrapped off is because I just don't see the exact relevance as to what board exams are. Why are they, first of all, made into such a big stigma in class 10th and 12th? What do they really have to give out to the students' development and due course when they really move out in the real world? It just adds unnecessary pressure onto the students, as we did see that in 2006, about 5,000 students committed suicide. And every day, as the exams are going on right now, every other day we are hearing someone or the other committing suicide. So what's really the point of this form of education where you put unnecessary pressure on tiny 15-year-olds, which right. is which just does not contribute to anything except sleepless nights and troubled parents and children around. Your time is up. Uh, I'll let Arman talk now. Arman, tell me something. Do you feel that the suicides uh, that she was talking about and the pressure that she was talking about, that's not so much because of the academic pressure, but because of parental and societal pressure? Absolutely. You're absolutely bang on. I mean, that is what something I wanted to address in the first place. You use very strong words like pressure, stigma, what we need to find out is where do these originate from? What's the cause? I don't remember anybody from the CBSE coming to our school and telling us, you know, the class 10 board examinations is a do or die situation for you. It comes from our micro environment, our parents, our societies, our neighborhood. Now that is something which is not under the control of the board. What here is required is counseling. That examinations are there to be taken as they've been taken all along since we've been doing our education. So I think stigma, pressure is not what is it's not cause. so much about academic pressure, it's, 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 it's because of the society. Uh, Divya, also, uh, wouldn't you concede that class 10 board examinations are an important stepping stone because uh, they're right before the class 12th board examinations and on the basis of your 12th marks, it is decided the kind of college you will go to, the kind of career you're going to have in future. So, uh, I mean, how would you counter something like that? I, I find it really strange. How does studying that in 10th and then 12th and then that leads to obviously your admission. Why don't we have a more consistent system? Why don't why aren't we taught in such a manner from grade one? Why don't why if we are more consistent throughout, then we don't have to attempt all these tenth, eleven, twelfth, and made to seem that tenth is the most important thing in your life, and then twelfth is even more important. And if you fail to do so, then oh my God, your life Perhaps is over. Perhaps not the most important, but one of one of well, the really important, important stepping parts stones. of your life. Because as and when we grow, we are made to tell, oh my God, it's your tenth. Please focus. Yeah. 11th, you can relax a little. But oh, it's we all 12th. remember those days. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 12th. If you don't focus, you won't become anything in life. And sadly, that's not what life is about. There's so much more to life than really these exams. And what do they contribute? What do they give out? They're just like normal exams. The only difference is you go out to another center, write your exams there. There's another person ex examining it. Simple. Right. Uh, Arman, don't you feel that perhaps a student who's 15 years old, which is when he's attempting his 10th boards, do you feel uh, he or she perhaps is not that equi well equipped to handle that kind of pressure, be it academic pressure or parental pressure, whatever you want to call it? So uh, is that the right age for somebody to take up uh, an examination at that, that I mean, age? again, say, that's the core point again. We we're deflecting from the issue here. We're talking about whether we want to scrap the examinations or not. The whole idea about get, introducing the examinations at that early age is so that we can start coping up with pressures. We learn time management skills. We learn right. task management skills. We learn how to prepare for important days. We, we'll have interviews later in our careers. We'll have uh, entrances exams later in our careers. So you're not that far off from that bracket. You're gonna hit, you're gonna be sitting on those exams when you're 18, and for a 15 year old to get used to an atmosphere, get into a domain where he's already experiencing those pressures, I think it's a good system. Like he was like he was just saying that. 10th exams are not just about scoring marks. They're also about sort of instilling uh, the habits, good habits like working hard, time management, etc., which are very important. And the sooner you learn it in your life, the better you're going to do uh, in future. So, would you agree with that? Uh, my point is that just 
throughout that one year and plus one, that is your 12th, is that enough to prepare you for your entire life? Why can't we have it from grade one or since the time, time the child is born or gotten into, since the time they get into education? Can't this be consistent? Can't we have modules and examinations that prepare you throughout your life for all these things and not just 10th and 12th? Like two years is a bit of a shock to any student. Right. So my point is, I think the, if one were, has to have these exams, they have to be consistent and not made to seem like an alien thing. That but pops. also the kind of assembly line education system that we have, uh, some people might not like the phrase assembly line, but the kind of education system that we have has worked pretty well for us. Absolutely. And uh, all kinds of, uh, you know, corporate leaders, uh, world leaders, ec economists have, have uh, come out of the system. So, uh, and you wouldn't sort of, you know, think that, yes, that's that's perhaps like one of the evidences, if not proof, of the fact that, that our education system is just fine and uh, it's not to be tampered with. I think India is such a diverse country that we made to believe even things are not in place, like, for example, I wouldn't want to comment on it, but I'll still say, like, the political system, we find our ways. We don't wait for any system or any organization to support us. The education, everyone knows the education system is just not right. We don't get, that is why the rise of students going abroad. And people who have come out of the Indian education system, that is right. a very handful of students who have had that willpower to go out and do something. I don't really think that's... And perhaps a, also the right guidance from parents. Sometimes it's not really the case with all the students. Had right. that been the case, there wouldn't have so many suicide cases and it, there wouldn't have been so much pressure on just numbers that you have to score. To get into SRCC, I mean, it's unrealistic. You could easily get into a Oxford or, in How, or a Howard then get into SRCC. That's that's a very important point. I mean, because in standard 12th, you're supposed to score uh, marks in the range of 95%, 100. 90 to 95%. And you haven't even practiced. You haven't even shadow practiced it. So jump, sort of, you know, jumping the gun, attempting uh, board exams for the first time in class 12th. Where does that put a student? See, uh, I mean, she spoke about a lot of issues. Let me get to them one by one. I mean, we all know Charles Darwin, survival of the fittest. It, it applies in every field comes to education also. You talked about a few students having that willpower to go on and do it. Whether you're studying here or you're studying abroad or in any particular system, you will have that few which are the cream. So that gets separated initially. So that's one thing. As far as your question, whether we're supposed to score 95, 98%, yes. I think we're quite lucky that we happen to live in a country where the competition has driven the scales so high. The reason we'd be producing so many top leaders, so many top doctors, engineers, you, you know, travel across the world and that's what you're gonna get, Indians every second important person and in any system. And you don't system. think it, it's that's just because of the population. fact that we have a huge population? <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, it, it is because of the fact, I mean, it plays a role, but uh, not because so many people want to get educated. But we educated. definitely have a lot of engineers coming out of the system every year. These, these are the people, an these are the people every, uh, who have put us on the world map. These mm. are the people who've made us the third largest economy. That leads to another problem, <clears throat> and that is the quality of education. Absolutely. Just because of the fact that there are a million and a half engineers coming out of engineering colleges every year doesn't make our education system really, you know, the kind of education system it should be because then it leads to the problem of unemployability. Unemployed. If you look at the national employability report, while well, 50% of students, graduates coming out of colleges are unemployable. So how do you, how do you sort of, you know, uh, I mean, in fact, perhaps don't you think that uh, this provision should be made uh, stricter and in fact, the fact that it's been made optional, the 10th exams, in fact, they should be sort of, you know, uh, made compulsory again? Not at all. I think, uh, you know, as you were talking before as well, 10th because exams... exams are, are definitely a good uh, sort of, you know, indication of uh, where you stand with, yeah. with others. If they were to be made uh, compulsory, I think they have to be more, more, they have to be more creative. The biggest problem is, is our ecosystem. That's just not right in place. And I think if the ecosystem maybe becomes right, if the supporting bodies are correct, then that exam could be helpful. I did the IB myself, so exams were fun. They were not boring because 30 percent of your exams were practical was practical work and over here right. it's literally going out and writing who said this to whom who died in which year really when you go out in the real world do you remember which leader died on what date and what relevance does it keep had it been more experimental more practical right. people would have remembered how the yes. solvent goes into this one and makes whatever something out of it right so you're saying you do not have any problems with examinations as such but your issue perhaps is with the fact that the kind of uh, pressure which is the hype which is created around uh, the board examinations, that's what you have a problem with. Arman, uh, talk to us about hype. What do you think? I mean, you know, the hype which is created around 10th boards, is it, is it, uh, I mean, is it realistic? It's absolutely not realistic. I mean, you know what, we need counseling sessions. We need counseling for parents. We need counseling for teachers. We, we need 
students to know that this is not a do or die situation. It's just another exam which is going to be assessed by somebody else. But what, what we're debating here is examination system in place. You scrap that off and you've all of a sudden taken a yardstick away to measure ourselves against. Where do we head? What direction to choose? Whether I'm good, good, good in sciences, good in mathematics, good in arts. All of a sudden you're asking an 18 year old to step out in this competitive world and make a decision for his career based on what? Based on what numbers? Based on what reality? Nothing. Right. Need that, that's an interesting point. And don't you feel that uh, the fact that, you know, uh, this still should be there because it is, again, in other words, is a stepping stone and uh, the performance of a student in standard 10th to a great extent determines how well he or she will do in standard 12th. My entire problem is with the fact that why 10th and 12th? What is what is 9th I mean, and 11th done wrong in life? Perhaps fifth or sixth. That's fine. I mean, you know, but we're just talking about the system that we have. So it might as well be standard fifth or standard six. But perhaps that's when students are like really small. They cannot uh, handle that kind of pressure. So perhaps 15 is supposed to be you know uh, above the age when they can. I just think if if you know if you have if you think that exams are the right way to measure someone's capability then the exams should be made more creative, the education system should be more, made more creative, where, you actually reflect the, where it actually reflects the child's talent. If you have to you know, choose a particular stream in class 11, it's solely dependent on your marks, and I don't think that's fair. Just because you didn't score a certain percentage doesn't mean you can't do biology, you do not have the aptitude to study biology, because it's the most, you know, there's the hierarchy, sciences, and then commerce and humanities is considered to be a complete right. idiot box which is not the case. You have the most efficient lawyers coming out of that system. Right. So I but think someone who might be a good lawyer, who might make a good lawyer, might not make a good doctor. Uh, Arman, wouldn't you agree with that? I've got, <laughs> I've got you know, way too many examples of telling people that it's not the numbers which are going to judge somebody's ability. I absolutely agree with you on that point. And we need upgradation and a little bit of changes to our examination system. Obviously, you know, with but time overall, we need to progress you feel it's overall. Fine. But I'll tell you something. I had a friend who created the IIT entrance exam and she still went to Singapore because he wanted to be a game designer. He scored 95% and still opted out. Why? Because he was very clear about what he wanted to do. And that he figured out right. when he gave a class 10 C++ I, you know, IT Precisely exam. Precisely my point, that our <coughs> system is such where we only promote pure subjects. So engineering, med medicine, maths, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. We export handicrafts out of India. So can't we put that into a system and students who are interested in design and other forms right. Besides mathematics and computers and engineering and the typical, you know, the subjects, can't they take that path? And there are professions out there related to those streams as well right. that India is excelling at. Right. So we're uh, running short of time. Uh, concluding rema uh, remarks, Arman. See, uh, what I'd like to conclude with is that our examinations do not need to be abolished. They need evolution. That is something we're looking forward right. to so that we have an uh, aptitude test in place. We have students who have more options and they can you know, pick directions because that's the key, picking a direction and heading towards that direction. But as soon as you take the yardstick away, you take right. that decision away from their life and way to head, you're putting them into very difficult waters later in life, which can be catastrophic, basically. Divya. I don't think 10th and 12th solely would <coughs> give them a direction. I think if exams have to have, if they have to take place, they have to be consistent, maybe from 9 till 12th or 8 till 12th. And they have to upgrade every year. So as a student is growing, they grow, the difficulty level grows with it. At the moment you start talking about examinations, it always leads to passionate arguments from both sides. We will uh, wrap up uh, the show on that note, uh, but you don't go anywhere because there's a lot more coming up on the other side.